second key creator drafting plant design plant layout tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to spend more time going over some of the functionality mentioned in the first tutorial. I already have a new file open which used a template uh, to help me start a new design which already has my level tree and my level structure all ready to go. Let's start by selecting the beams to be my active level and we're going to go ahead and create uh, an I-beam using structural shapes. Go to the ribbon interface under mechanical and you'll see that you have your structural shapes. Let's go ahead and select the I-beams. Under the I-beams you can see you have various parameters, standards that you can pull down to select the type of I-beam that you want. Make sure that the representation is for top since this is a plan view. If you need to you can change some of the other parameters. Second of a thing of importance is to make sure that that is checked to be a mechanical element. If that's checked off, the lines you see that represent an I-beam would be just that, lines and arcs. It will not be grouped as a mechanical element. So turn that on and let's go ahead and place it. Notice the control point for my I-beam. So I'm going to just eyeball it near the location I want and place it. Let's go ahead and highlight that I-beam, go to my context ribbon, and select the move, dynamic move. We're going to move that I-beam into position. My base point is going to be the lower left. I can take that sphere and drag it and snap it into the corner. And there is my I-beam in position. Next thing we need to do is make multiple copies of that I-beam in the X direction. To do that again, we're going to go to into the dynamic move. Select my I-beam. This time my base point is going to be the x-coordinate that I'm interested in. Now I can go ahead and select the copy end function. Specify the number of additional copies, in this case three. Select the type of array this is, a linear or angular. It's going to be linear. And I can go ahead and highlight that X vector and drag it out. And you can see I'm going to have three copies. Move that out a little bit farther out. So now I need to place that last I-beam in its proper position. Highlight that vector again. Context menu to select position. Indicate the X position. And I can go ahead and select that endpoint. And you can see my I-beams are now equally spaced as I want them. Next thing we're going to do is we need to move those I-beams up in the Y direction. We're basically going to do the same function but in a different direction. So this time I'm going to use a filter and go ahead and select structural shapes. This was the checkbox we had turned on. The system will now find all the structural shapes that are visible. And you can see I found all four of them. Now we can go ahead and place this, the base point. This time it's going to be critical for the Y coordinate. Just like before, we're going to do a copy in. This time two copies. Linear. I can go ahead and drag the Y vector up a little bit so we can see what's happening. And again, zoom fit context menu on that vector to take position in the Y and select one of the Y coordinates. And there you can see I now have all my I-beams in position. You've noticed when working on a large part like a plant layout they, there's a lot of zooming in and zooming out to get at the different positions and geometry. We can alleviate that by using the split screen. By placing the cursor there I have now split this screen into four live views. Let's go ahead and do a zoom fit. And you can see that if I select OK, it's going to fit, do a zoom fit in all the viewports. Once I have the viewport zoomed up, I can go ahead and zoom in in the specific areas of interest, in this case, the corners of the building. 
and these are again all live views. To illustrate the benefit of the views, let's go ahead under assembly and we're going to go ahead and insert our exit symbol. Go under create part reference and insert a part reference. Find your library folder. And here we're going to go ahead and select the exit symbol. Your options window appears. These are the settings I use. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Dyna handle option. There's no need for any rotation on the exit symbol. And now I can quickly snap the exit symbol in the midpoint of those doorways in all four views. And I've quickly placed all my corner exits. So let's do that again. Assembly, create, insert part reference. This time we're going to go ahead and turn it, put in a fire alarm with the strobe light. This is going to require some rotation, uh, so we will turn on the, the use Dyna handle option. So you can see there's my strobe light, and if I when I put it on that line, I can either select the shift key, which now will put it on that line, and I can rotate the arrow and get it to be 180 degrees. Go to the upper view, similar. I can snap to a midpoint if I want, or again, hold the shift key. And if I click on the arrow, I can actually type in the value I want. Move on to the next corner. In this case, maybe I'll just place it at the midpoint. And then finally, back to the lower right-hand corner, shift key as I place it on that line and manually rotate it. You can also use the multiple viewports to create geometry. In this case we're going to use that schematic approach to describe where the uh, electrical lines might go. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my environment level and place it under, excuse me, under the resources level, under the 110. Now I can go ahead and start creating geometry. Using the context menu, I go to the curve function. Let's go ahead and create a line vertical. I'm just going to pick the endpoints in the different viewports. Repeat that now with the horizontal line. Ports. And now finally, again with the context menu, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, the curve trim both. Now I can start trimming. If I get close enough, I can pick both lines at once or I can pick them one at a time and trim them up. And again, these are all valid, so I can go ahead and pick the lines to trim in the different viewports to get the uh, schematic power lines to go all the way around the building. So now I'm done using the viewport. So I'm going to go to the view, viewports, and select single, and I'm back to a single viewport. Let's go ahead and name that line, one of the lines I just created. I highlight it, and using the context menu, select name. You're prompted for the name. Enter the name, in this case, 110 volts. And so now when I run hover over it, my tooltip will also identify it with the name 110 volt. This allows you to uh, uh, a quick way of identifying geometry besides just organizing it on the proper level. Let's go ahead and start placing some equipment on the area right over here. One way you might want to uh, use to place equipment is to use the grid. So you go to the grid function under the view, and you can set your increments. In this case, we're using 12 inches as the gap. My grid alignment, I can specify where I want to, how I want to align my grid. So let's go to the middle of this I-beam. And then go ahead and turn the display on. And you will see those little dots appear representing your grid. 
Let's go ahead now and put a piece of equipment in here. Again, insert the part. Let's go ahead and find my machine library folder. There you go. And you can see I can have multiple representations for a specific piece of hardware. I can have a plan view or a front elevation view if needed. So let's go ahead and click the, the plan view. Go ahead and make sure I use a Dyna handle because I will be using it for rotation. And there's my machine. You can obviously use any of the options available in the conversation bar for placing it by offset or along, however you want to place your machine. We're just going to place it here. Rotate it, and now we have it. To place the same machine using the snap, I'm going to hold the control key down. Notice that my cursor changed. And also that when I move it, you can see it kind of snapping to each of the little grid points. Place it, and again, rotate it. Now we're going to add some more information about this particular machine. Highlight it. Go to our context menu and select the format. Select the standards, properties, and start filling in the information. We're going to go ahead and assign an asset number to this particular machine. 1661. You can go ahead and put in a description uh, of this 3-axis CNC machine. And if you want, you can add user properties. Again, a highlight, hit new, highlight, and hit the F2 button to go ahead and enter values in that particular field. Using the context menu for the dynamic sketcher, we're going to go ahead and create some uh, final geometry here that might represent an aisle. Notice I'm using the control key to snap to various positions by the change in my cursor. And I'm just going to quickly close this off either again as an aisle or maybe some kind of restricted area. We're going to go ahead and use this area to set up a snapshot. So I zoom in to the area that I want, as, as zoomed up as I want, turn any levels on that I might want to have displayed, and go to the snapshot. Save, enter a name for this snapshot, in this case cell 1. Click the options I want, I want to save the zoom, save the levels, say OK. Now when I zoom back this out a little bit, I can go to my snapshot and I can go to the load button and I can say, okay, show me all. This is all the geometry that I currently have. If I want to, I can go ahead and say, show me beams only. And again, select cell number one. And it takes me directly to that particular zoom and the levels are turned on.